Yes, 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 yes. If, if, if you don't think that God is real, this is proof right here that God is real. This proof. Listen, I can go on for, for 40 minutes with this, but I'm going to cut it short. I should be dead a whole bunch of times over and, and paralyzed, but I'm not. Uh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Like, I'm sitting here and I, I say these words and they're, they have so much meaning. So much meaning. Uh -huh. Because God is good. Yes, he is. So good. So let's let's get on the subject of love. And the reason why I said all that was because love is the main reason why I'm here. Uh -huh. Let me tell let me explain this to you. Have you ever let me, let me rephrase that? It's really hard to love a raging junkie. I don't know if you have any experience with, with a raging junkie, but I was a raging junkie, and it's very hard to love that person. But my family never stopped showing me love. Amen. You know, there's, I have a whole bunch of junkie friends, and their family would not have handled them the way mine handled me. And it's because of that love that I'm here right now. Uh -huh. Yes, and it's that is not normal love. It's godly love. Yeah. Because I was that way for a decade. Uh -huh. I can't even imagine how you dealt with that. I can't even imagine. I have trouble when my dog wimps. That hurts me. So I couldn't imagine my poor parents having to watch me destroy myself but they never ever ever stopped showing me God's love so thank you for that thank you I'm, I'm, you know what I'm doing right now I'm repaying them this is my way of repaying you so thank you thank you I love you and I love you, and I love all of you. <laughs> God is good. All right, so let's, let's, let's get on track here. Hallelujah. The reason why I chose love is the law for the title of today's message is because for us as believers and followers of Christ, love is not a choice. It is a commandment. Uh -huh. Yes, it is. And... Um, I'm getting ahead of myself here. You might be sitting there and thinking, so as a Christian, I'm commanded to love people that I don't know. Are you thinking that right now? <laughs> this may seem somewhat impossible, right? If you really think about that, if you really think about I'm commanded to love people that I don't know, that seems somewhat impossible. If you consider it in terms of how we perceive love, we perceive it as an emotional feeling that builds up over time, right? We've all gone on dates and turned that into love at some point, right? Hopefully, video stake. Um, the Bible uses the word love in terms of how we treat and relate to other people. So it isn't a feeling that we're commanded to conjure up. That's just not what it is. And we can see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I am going to today give you an opportunity to follow along with me because I've watched myself speak before and I didn't do that. So today, if you'd like to read along with me, I'm going to talk extra slow until you get to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Are you with me? Yes. Chapter 13, verse 4. We're going to read from verse 4 to verse 8. And I am reading to you from the English Standard Version. In that verse, we find these words. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant. It is not rude. It does not insist on its own way. 
It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yes. Right? It's, it's impossible for us to love strangers. We just need to tolerate and treat them well. That's our mission. Amen. And what I just read, we were seeing part of the Apostle Paul's teaching on spiritual gifts, where faith, hope, and love come together in an eternal formation. But love is considered the greatest of those gifts. Do you know why love is considered the greatest of those gifts? I'm going to tell you, and I, I was excited to find this. It is considered the greatest because there are appropriate times for the use of the other spiritual gifts. But love is always and will last forever. Amen. Amen. <sighs> that was good, right? You know, Dad talks about, aha, uh -huh, I got a huge one with that. I was excited. Now, the commandment part we find here. This is in John chapter 13, verse 34. And I'm reading to you from the NIV. I'm going to talk slowly to give you a minute to get there. Who here, let's let's do this for a second. Who here uses their phone as a Bible? Oh, no, I have a lot of people. Right. Who here uses a regular Bible? A book? All right. So everybody should be reading along. In John 13, verse 34, I'm reading to you from the NIV. We find these words. A new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you. So you must love one another. Uh -huh. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Amen. There are some very strong undertones that can be withdrawn from that text. Essentially, if we're not openly demonstrating love to others, that people can clearly discern as extraordinary then we simply aren't doing enough. Mm. Did you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. We should be noticeably above and beyond when it comes to love. And I truly believe that the power of love can be an asset to us and can help us grow closer to the image of God. Mm -hmm. Because God is love. Mm -hmm. Love is an intentional choice to do what's best for someone else, to put someone else's needs above our own. It's a driving force that we can control, mm -hmm. but we just need the grace of God to do it. Amen. The internet description of love is as follows. As a noun, it is an intense feeling of deep affection or a great interest and pleasure in something. As a verb, it is to feel deep affection for someone or to enjoy or like something very much. We use the word love for so many different things, right? Mm -hmm. I love this. I love that. We love everything. I don't know if you ever noticed. People love everything. But today, we're discussing the love that God has for us, the love that we have for him, and the love that we're to show to others. Mm -hmm. Love, it needs to be demonstrated, right? There needs to be action behind it to make it tangible. Now, when I think of love, I can't help but think about my wife. She's she's lovely. That she is. We've been married for 10 years, and I can honestly say that I love her more now than I did yesterday, or two weeks ago, or 10 years ago. Yep, scoring points. Now, when we love someone, that love makes us want to be good to that person, doesn't it? Right? Mm -hmm. I know I want to give my wife everything that I possibly can because I am so thankful to have such a precious gift from God. Because that is exactly what she is. Thank God. Cha-ching. <laughs> but seriously. Seriously. No, this is real. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not just up here to score points. I want to do all that I can to show her and him how much I appreciate the fact that I have her in my life to love. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Yeah. Wow. We were created to love. Yeah. Which is why it's something that we all crave. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. 
It's the reason there are so many successful dating apps and websites. We need love. Just look at the way God created us, right? He made the man, and then he made the woman so that they could live and grow together in love. In 1 John chapter 4, I'm, I'm, we're going to label this the love chapter. Because the word love is used over and over again. So many times, in fact, that I count between verse 4 and verse 21, the word love appears 29 times. That's a lot of times. In 1 John 4, we're going to read verse 15 to 19, and we're reading these from the NIV. You find these words. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Mm, that's a good one. Yep, uh -huh. Oh, yes is right. Those are powerful words. And I don't know if you caught it, but they indicate in there that love can and will take the place of fear in our hearts and minds. No place in a believer has fear. It does not belong. Here's another interesting fact. Also, in the New Testament, there is a lot of use of the phrase one another. So many, in fact, that the phrase one another is used 60 times in the New Testament. That's as far as I could tell. Maybe more, maybe less. If you want to count, I'm going to leave that up to you. Do you think the importance is being emphasized for a reason? Uh -huh. I would say so. I truly believe that our interactions with one another is another gift from God. Amen. Think about it. Friends, family, and loved ones, where would we be without those people? Mm. Right? Amen. It's a gift. Uh -huh. We need to love one another. When we learn the importance of loving one another, because it is a calling, it is a way for us to glorify God. Amen. Amen. Isn't that what our Christian walk is all about? Yeah. Right? Growing closer to the image of Jesus by following his ways and his commandments, and then by showing our gratitude by giving him glory. The attributes of love and mercy are closely related. Love is more than just showing mercy, but mercy is an essential part of love. In Matthew chapter 5, we're going to read verses 43 to 46. I'm reading to you from the English Standard Version. You have heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even tax collectors do the same? Hmm. I've noticed in the Bible, if they're comparing you to a tax collector, that is not good. Those people were apparently just as hated then as they are now. Anybody here like the IRS? I didn't think so. Being able to operate in this way, that is being able to tolerate and be good to our enemies, show love to those who show the opposite to us, in addition to everyone else, is a true mark of a Christian and will certainly stand out as extraordinary. As it should, because it is. The vital importance of love is made clear again when we look at Matthew 22. In this situation, 
in Matthew 22, Jesus was already a topic of conversation due to interactions where he was using his godly wisdom to silence those who challenged him. It's sad, but they had no idea who they were dealing with, right? They did not know this is the Son of God. He's about to shut us down. So here in Matthew 22, we find a law expert who was trying to test Jesus by asking him this question. We find this question in Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. He asked this, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? He's trying to, he's trying to set him up. Little does he know. And then in 22, verse 37 to 40, Jesus replies with these words. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. That's a pretty big statement. If the, if the vital importance of operating in love wasn't clear to you before then, I bet it is now. Everything else is irrelevant if you get the first two. Let's dissect it a little bit. Right? When I read through that, I drew this conclusion. We need to put aside religious nonsense and simply do what he's telling us to do. That's it. Which is really, really love him and those around us. And then the rest will fall into place. Amen. That sounds like a win-win to me. And then we need to really see this for what it is, right? Think about it, right? Jesus is speaking directly to us here. The, the words in my Bible were read. And he's telling us to focus on the positive commandments, right? In this case, we're talking about the shalls in this scenario. And that will override the need to worry about the shall nots. Amen. And that's huge to me. It's tremendous. Jesus is giving us a shortcut to personal success. I'm, I like it. I'm into shortcuts. <laughs> Loving our neighbor as much as ourselves, this is easier said than done. Let's be real. There are a lot of unlovable people in this world. A lot. Let me stress it. There are a lot. <laughs> I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of them. And most of them are on Southern State Parkway. <laughs> I don't know why, but they they congregate there. Those people are the reason that God gives us mercy, grace, and forgiveness. Hallelujah. God knows that people are hard to love, right? If we know it, he definitely knows it. Which is why, this is good, which is why the first command is to love him Amen. so he can help us love them. Amen. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Yes, God is so good. Thank you, Lord. We find a similar interaction in Luke chapter 10, where another expert, he asked Jesus a question in an attempt to test him. So in Luke chapter 10, verse 25, we're going to read 25 to 37. We find the parable of the Good Samaritan, and it starts with the question in verse 25. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answers him the same way as he did in Matthew 22 by saying in Luke chapter 10, verse 27, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, in this situation, this particular man, he took it a step further in an attempt to find a technicality. And he strategically asked this question in Luke 10, verse 29. And who is my neighbor? Hmm. This man is admitting guilt in a way, I would say, and or looking for an out concerning some certain individuals who are more than likely really hard to love. Are you following? Amen. I'm thinking that's what he's doing. Jesus explains that after the priest, the Levite, did I miss something? No? Jesus explains that after the priest, the Levite, or the assistant minister avoided helping the injured man, the most unlikely savior came in the form of a Samaritan. 
this context equates to help coming from the last person on earth that you would expect it to. And then it paints a very clear picture of the example we're supposed to set for others. Mm -hmm. There are promises connected to our obedience when it comes to demonstrating our love for God and others. The Bible says that we will receive peace when we operate in love. And it says it in 1 John 4, verse 18. It says this. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Amen. Peace is one of the most important things that I can think of yes. in terms of living a happy, healthy, and fulfilled right. life. Yes, Amen. important is peace. This is a sad fact. 30.6 million adults in this country, which equates to 12.6% of our population, is on benzos. Those that don't know what benzos are, that's Xanax, Valium, uh -huh. yes. anti-anxiety, anti-fear medication. Those are all used to quiet the voice of fear. 30.6 million people are afraid to the point where they're going to the doctor for it. That is sad. Those people would love some peace in their lives. Because the presence of peace is the absence of fear. The next reward for loving we can find is in 1 John chapter 3, and we're reading verse 21 and 22. We find these words. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. Hmm. That's a good place to be. Yes. Oh, yeah. So essentially, God will answer the prayers of people who follow his commands. Amen. I like the sound of that. Again, though, this is easier said than done. But that's why we're here, right? We're a work in progress. We're on our way. We're going to get there in due time. Yes. We just need to have confidence in our God. Yes. And we need to do what he says, expecting that we will receive that which he promised. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. It's called faith. Amen. The final promise for loving we can find in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. We find these words. Above all, love each other deeply. Because love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. Mm -hmm. So this essentially means that when we truly love one another, that forgiving comes easy. Mm -hmm. Truly consider the way you'll approach a hurt from a family member compared to the same hurt from a stranger. That stark contrast, because it's going to be pretty significant, the way that you're, it's going to be a lot easier to forgive your family member for that offense than it is a stranger. And that's completely because of the presence of love. I believe the real challenge is getting to the point where we can demonstrate our love for others with complete disregard for whether or not they appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, when you get there, you're there. Yes. That is totally selfless love. The only objective with demonstrating that, that kind of love is to follow God's command. That's it. God will make sure that we're cared for and happy if we follow his commands. Amen. And sometimes he even does something to show that he is pulling the strings and there's no way around it. I got a story for you. This, this, I, I love telling this story. I'm pretty sure I told it before. God does things sometimes just to show us I'm in the picture. Amen. So, Hallelujah. my first apartment, I'm, uh, I don't know, 24, something like that. And me and my roommate, we, we decided we want to go to the beach Saturday. Nice day out. I remember it was about 87 degrees, sun was shining. 
And we, we got in the car, we headed down to 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven's right on the way to the beach. So we go into 7-Eleven, we're getting our supplies, and we're having a good time. You remember the days when you're in your 20s and it was sunny out, and we were on the beach, remember that, right? Ah, the good old days. Yeah. So um, I, I, can, I can see this whole scenario in my head. So I'm gonna play it out for you. We pay, we walk out the door, we go to the car. And I remember my friend got in and I was standing outside the car looking over the car at the door of the 7-Eleven. Now, as we were walking out, there was a clearly disabled man walking in. He was clearly disabled. He had a little disfigurement of his face and he spoke in a very a tone that you can tell he had a disability. It was not uh, a, a secret that this guy had a disability. You could tell. So he was holding the door for people as we walked out and other people walked in. So I, I don't know why I was looking at him, but I was looking at him and he's holding the door for everyone that walked in. And he said something to a couple that the man did not like. The man didn't hesitate. He cold cocked and punched oh. this dude right in his face. Oh, no. Picture that. This dude was clearly disabled spoke in a way where you could tell he was clearly disabled and some creep broke his nose. I was completely mortified. So I ran inside, I got the guy ice and paper towels and I did what I should do. I helped him. I let him use my phone. He called his brother, his brother came. His brother was livid understandably so because what happened to this man was horrible absolutely horrible the person that did that was heartless absolutely heartless but the whole point of the story was was is this is this I showed this man love that's what I did because I had to there was no way I couldn't do what I did so let's fast forward three years we're going to use three years in this scenario. I don't really know how much it was. Two, three, something like that. Driving home from work. You got to remember, I'm in my 20s. I'm not that smart at this point. So I run out of gas. People in their 20s do dumb things like that, like run out of gas. All right, that's what I did. So I'm on the LIE. I can see my exit, but I'm walking. My car is back there, and I'm walking on the side of the LA. And it's getting dark out, so, you know, this isn't the best scenario for me. As I'm walking, a car pulls over in front of me. I'm like, yes, you know? When I think about it now, should I have been like, yes, stranger's about to pick me up. <laughs> Maybe I'll get home tonight. So I walk up to the car. Jesus is real. Who was in the passenger seat? The disabled man. And his brother. I, just, I took one look at this guy and I said, oh my goodness. I couldn't, can't believe it's you. And they were like, excuse me. <laughs> so I owed him and just started telling the story. Oh my god, you got punched in the face. The, the brother was like, you know who did it. <laughs> the you didn't want to let me in the car. You know who did it. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, I helped him. I'm the one who let you. Oh my god. And, and we were both dumbfounded. Think about the odds. The only explanation for that is God is real. That's the only explanation. There is no other explanation. I love that story for that specific reason. Try to tell me otherwise. Please, I invite you to. Prove me wrong. It's impossible because God is real. Okay. Love is an attribute of God because he is the embodiment of love and power. And because we are his children, we have access to all that he is. Yes. And we have the same capacity to demonstrate his love and his power. Because yes. he's with us. Yes. 
God's love for us is completely and totally unconditional. We need to strive to be as close to God as possible Amen. when it comes to the way we love others. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to read verses 1 and 2 from the NIV. It says this, Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Amen. The Lord can help us rise above our human imperfections and step into his transcendent love. Amen. To live in love like Jesus, we need to have open hearts and minds so that we can fully utilize our God-given potential. Amen. Here are some ways in which we can begin taking steps toward loving like him. We can start by being mindful of the need to make deeper connections with the people around us to make loving them more feasible. That makes sense, doesn't it? We as humans can be very self-absorbed. Very. Especially in this day and age. Right? Listen to this. This is a gross statistic. It's disgusting. <laughs> Every one out of three pictures taken is a selfie. I can believe that. I, can I tell you something? Get over yourself. You're not that great. Sorry to tell you. Somebody needs to say it. The next step, I believe, lies in being more approachable. Yes. Being a welcoming, inviting person will draw people to you. Yes. If people aren't comfortable approaching us, we're doing something wrong. Right. Yes. Let's all strive to be more understanding and less judgmental. Yeah. Most of us, this is myself included, we do a really good job of beating ourselves up. When someone else does it, it's redundant. I've done a good job of that already. I don't need to hear it from you. God gives us grace, so we need to extend it to others. We need to be bold with our beliefs if we're going to make an impact. We need to put fear aside and do it anyway. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, in the English Standard Version, it says this. For God gave us not a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. We all have the ability to carry out God's will for our life. We have the ability. We just need to believe that and start acting like we believe it. Stand on the word of God to help strengthen your resolve in terms of loving others. If it's hard for you, the book will help. There are so many verses that indicate how important love is, especially in terms of spiritual growth. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14, we find these words. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, Forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. Yes. So you must also forgive. Amen. Yes. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Amen. Are you seeing a pattern here? Yes. Amen. I'm going to close with this verse. It's found in Romans 8, 37. We're going to read 37 to 39, the English Standard Version. The worship team, you guys want to come up? It says these words. Know in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is no power in this universe that is above the love of God. Yes. 
If you received anything today, can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, before I, before I put down the microphone, this love message was meant for someone's ears. I don't know who, but the enemy tried to stop this from happening more than once. And there was so many confirmations that this was supposed to come out of my mouth. The main one came this morning. I woke up this morning. I don't know about you, but this is 2022. The first thing I do is pick my phone up. Because we're all phone junkies now. And I checked my email. And there was a, there was a prayer of love sent to me this morning from the Bible app. Does the Bible app send you prayers randomly? That's what I got in my email this morning. A prayer of love sent to me from the Bible app. So we're going to pray the prayer of love because I feel like we need to. Yes, I believe this message and specifically this prayer was for someone. What are the odds of that? What are the odds that the Bible app sent me a love prayer today? Slim to none. I love it when God shows us he's real. Repeat these words. Father God, Father God I, know I know that you are love. And because you are in me, because you are in me then therefore, therefore, I too am love. Too am love. Remind, me daily Remind me daily that love is always near. Because you are always with me. If I feel unworthy of love, remind me that you have made me worthy. If I feel incapable of showing love, help me remember what you sacrificed for me. Remind me of how loved I am so I can remind others of how loved they are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much.